What is up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. It is time for episode 12 of the $10 team, and I apologize. This is very late. Plain and simple. Should have had one out last week. I didn't. At last check, we had 12,200. We have doubled that. Wait, we've doubled that? I guess that's what happens when you don't post for a week. We've got a lot to catch up on, so let's just dive into it off rip. Let's start with how we did last week. Not well. Not great, Bob, if you will. I don't know if I played it because I don't Not have my headphones great, Bob. in. Maybe I played it twice. Sorry if I did. As you can see, we finished fourth in the division. Few games under 500. I think we were only like three games out of the wild card. Actually, I can check it. I don't think this is coming up for y'all. Five games out. Yeah, because we actually had a bad finish to the season, uh, too. If we'd had a big finish in September, could have maybe stolen a wild card there. But anyway... That's water under the proverbial bridge, and uh, as you can see, we're off to an 11 and 8 start thus far this year. We're now in back-to-back -back seasons uh, where we haven't won a division. After winning the division, choking in the World Series of 2022, actually, did we make it? We choked in the LCS. We've got a lot to do, folks. Okay, we got 24. Uh, we'll round up. We'll call it 25,000. Um, we got to take a look here. Let's see. As you can see, we're 11 and 8 right now. That's, you know, we're not freaking out. One game back. Do we know anybody in our division? I don't recognize these names now. We'll go all the way. We'll check the whole conference. I'm not I'm not checking the the NC though. Nope, don't recognize any of those. Anyway, let's get into it here. Let's talk about the ball club. So I think this will work. Will it? Can we look at last year? We can. Okay. So, what were the big issues? Well, as you can see, the offense was kind of uninspiring. Let's sort from the top here. You see Bonds was our best hitter, which is hilarious because of how much he'd been struggling. But it was in a part-time role. And you can see he's off to a good start again, also in a part-time role. Now, I don't know if this is a scenario where this is just where he's going to work best. And trying to extend him further is going to expose him or not. I really don't I don't really don't know which way to go with that. Meanwhile, BJ Surhoff was pretty disastrous last year. Uh, off to a great start this year. Ellie Rodriguez was our second best hitter, but he was the backup catcher. He's off to another good start right now as well. Craig maintained quality work. Selkirk, a uh, a big pickup for us. When do we pick him up? In 23? We've had him that long? Is this his third season with us? Damn. Okay. I thought it was the second season. Anyway, he's off to a wretched start this year. And then a bunch of mediocrity here. Martinez, Semyon, Patsednik, Marte, uh, even Anderson and Sabo at 93 and 92. We can call that mediocre. Like That's not so far below where you're, where you're freaking out. And then Joe Judge, somebody who had worked to get to get back in the lineup because he'd been performing well, uh, was super underwhelming last year with an 89 OPS plus. So the offense just didn't didn't get the job done at all. Let's go ahead and revert back to this year. Go look at the pitching. Actually, I should have just left it because now I can do this again. And we'll look at the starters. We see we'll sort by innings here. We'll go Whitehill had a 5.27 ERA. That's just awful. As you can see here, just looking at ERA+, plus, which works on the same uh, idea of OPS+, plus, where 100 is average, you want to be above 100, uh, too far below 100, and, and you're in a lot of trouble. 76, 88, 79, those are bad. 94 is, you know, that's just below average. You can work with that if he's your fifth starter and everybody else is better. Maeda was our only guy over 100. Uh, we had Sircon. And Glass now doing well out of the bullpen in bulk, 96 and 94 innings counts, which is huge. But then not another 100 on the team. So the team sucked full stop. Everything was a problem. How do we approach fixing it? That's the question that we're asking today. Do we need to make massive changes? Do we need to make some tweaks? We're in iron now for the second straight season. That's okay. I don't think that's the end of the world. 
We've got some money to fix some things. The pitching has turned itself around, at least with the starters here. We have th four who are pitching really well, and Earl Whitehill, who's struggling, but I wonder if that's consistent struggles. It, it is. Three bad out of his four starts, but I'm not going to make an aggressive move on that. At worst, he moves to the bullpen, but I'm probably just going to sit tight. I'll tell you what, though. We are done with bronzes in the bullpen. So Brock and West, gone. That's 100 right there. That, that, that's 100% happening. They're gone. It's time to upgrade there. Um, they've given scattered quality work. Uh, you know, one good year from Brock, the other three, or the other two plus, we'll call this a plus for this year. Not so much David West started off brilliantly and then kind of was able to hang on. He only pitched 10 in a third last year, so he's basically eating up a roster spot for no reason. They're both gone. So let's address that first, and let's motivate ourselves to do that by taking them right off the team, which means I've got 21 minutes to get them fixed or else we play a game with two empty spots, which we don't want to do. Do we have anybody in the inactive? Okay. Always check that to make sure that I didn't have any sales that uh, didn't go through that I come back to check and because they go to inactive if you don't sell them. So we need two relievers. And they can be starters moved into a relief role. Maybe Whitehill goes into one of them, as I mentioned. That's uh, certainly a possibility. He's kind of balanced. In fact, he's a little bit worse against lefties as a lefty, which is kind of interesting. So he could fill a, a role there. Let's get into the pitching. All pitchers. Prefer to look at non-live. And again, the reason I do that, in case you're wondering, is because I know who's available as far as live series pitchers go. I don't really like live series pitchers. I'm more inclined to get live series hitters. I find live series pitchers, a lot of them underperform. I have a couple that I like already with Maeda and, uh, and Freed. But for the most part, I find that they underperform. So... That's what drives my decision making there. Plus, it's more fun to kind of have the uh, the old school guys that haven't thought about in years. Oh my God, Joey Hamilton! I remember him. I wonder. I tell you what, I think we should shoot higher here. McDonald's pretty balanced, by the way. But I think I think we're I think we're shooting higher. Let's bump this up to 77. We're we'll going to 95 here. But we're gonna cap it at 7,000. So if we reach up at that higher end, that's gonna be a starter, and then we'll move one of our starters into the bullpen. If we're on the lower end here, then we'll uh, maybe put them put them directly into the bullpen. But let's take a look here. Oh, David Hernandez from 2012. Kind of nasty. Uh, let's see here. I wonder if... If I should go straight up and just make it starters only. But uh, no, I don't mind sorting through everybody here. We're kind of we're kind of just looking. Grant Balfour, I remember when he was at the peak of his powers. Everyone loved to make the joke that it's the worst name for a pitcher. I mean, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny that a major league pitcher was named Ball Four. The jokes write themselves and they're cheesy, but it's pretty funny. Ooh, I like this Otsuka. He's really solid. And he's coming in under his average over the last seven. Can I get him to never throw that change up? Holy hell. All right, I think I'm going to get Otsuka off rip. I think that's somebody I like. Boom. We need two guys anyway. Let's get this first one locked and loaded here. Akinori, welcome to the squad. Boom. I have this Carse on the main squad. I've used him in silver tourneys. He's real hit and miss. Real hit and miss. In fact, sometimes he really frustrates me. As I was building my silver squad up, uh, there was a period there where he was one of my absolute best. So I had high expectations of him and he just... Never came through. 
I love this name, Boom Boom Beck. That's why I had to check him out. Bad stuff. Coming in pretty cheap relative to where he was. But let me see here. We've got... We've got the defense. Let me see if he's a... Uh, is he more... What's it called? Uh, ground ball, fly ball neutral. You want to check stuff like that too when you're doing this sort of thing with a guy with no stuff because that means the ball's going to be in play more. You want to see where he leans because uh, your defense may be able to counterbalance some of the... So he's neutral. So we need good defense all around. I don't know. I want to look at something real quick here. Uh, let me close that, that. And let's see real quick. Let's take a look at Boom Boom back. Boom. Oh, there it is. And what year was it? 1945. I just want to see what kind of year he had. So he pitched for Cincy and Pittsburgh at age 40. He put up 110 innings as like a hybrid with a 268 ERA and a 110 whip. 2.4 strikeouts per nine. That's hilarious, dude. Strikeout rates from back in the day are amazingly funny. But like even for his era, that means if his stuff is that bad, because I think they scale it pretty well. Because obviously you can't compare somebody from 1945 to the to these days because their stuff rating would be 8 billion and the guy in 1945 would have a negative 6,000. But uh, I think even for his era, a two points, what was it, 2.4? 2.4 K9 was awful. Oh wait, you guys aren't seeing it. Hang on. I'm sorry. I thought I was showing this. I'm a doofus. So we're looking at Boom Boom back here. As you can see, 2.4. Hilarious. Great season though. Anyway, sorry, I was hitting the wrong scene there, trying to trying to show y'all. I don't think I'm gonna get them. I, you know, I don't. I've learned to build teams that don't have to be overly reliant upon guys with stuff. I still like it though. I still, you know, prefer to have somebody who can get some K's. Um, you know, relative to everything else. Now. He did have, you know, teal ratings on the other two, both 80 plus, which is good. So I mean, he's not he's not an overwhelming L, but I don't think so. Was Beck a lefty or righty? Eh, he's right, right. Eh. Floyd Humans. I think I only know him from this game, from previous iterations. What a name, though. Daryl Kyle, rest in peace, man. I remember when he passed. That was really, really sad. So sudden, too, you know? Um, really strong pitcher, though. He's coming in at, at, at a nice price. Kevin Tappany, I remember him from the AL only league I grew up in, man. That's that's the first fantasy league I grew up in. A lot of guys coming in under their, their past seven days. Um, interesting. I haven't seen this market in a while. A lot of times the market is guys are way above their their previous seven days and I'm like why what's going on you know even guys who aren't tied to collections and stuff and I'm just frustrated by it but right now we're seeing some prices well below extreme ground ball and we, we have the team that well, there you go 963 13 99 all right let's take a look here let's keep keep going Mariano now, we did get rid of a righty and a lefty. I think we should try to favor getting a lefty here. I wish there was a, an easy way to see lefties identified. Now, I know damn well that Scherzer's a righty, but I'm still interested. And we could go... We can get Scherzer and then put White Hill into the bullpen as the lefty. Now the concern is the extreme fly ball tendency for Scherzer with, with the bad movement. That seems like a home run fest waiting to happen. 93-68-49. 93-68-49. 
These two are pretty similar here. I do think that Scherzer, obviously, I'm more a fan of his. I have watched his whole career. I only know Mario Soto from learning about him. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder. I tell you what. I feel like this card could make a pretty good reliever, though, too. Hmm. You know what? Let's get him. Let's do it. We're splurging a little bit, okay? We're splurging a little bit to make up for the fact that it's been a week since I did a whole video. Oh, been a whole week since I did a video. Been entirely too long. We're we're gonna we're gonna flip things upside down a little bit here. Is this? I want to say. I want to say. This is George Brett's brother. I think that's correct. Genius. It is indeed. What year is that? 1974? Here, I'll actually pull it up this time. 1974. He bounced around. One, two, three. Three different times he was traded mid-season. He was desirable. So 1974 here. 330, 128. Four and a half strikeouts, two and a half walks. Solid little season. 1974. What kind of splits data do we have for 74? Oh, he crushed lefties. All right, let's see what we got here for Ken Brett. That's not a bad little card. Small gains against lefties. Okay. Well, I'll write him down as a consideration for a lefty. Let's do this though real quick because we're on a clock, 10 minutes. Let's get these these two guys already joined the team because we moved the other two guys out. So let's do this. Let's go. Let's put Hmm. Glass now has been so good for us. Obviously this year he's sputtering a little bit, but whatever. Yeah, one bad outing figured um let's put max in the middle relief roll i gotta be honest i love lorenzen because he can hit and pitch he's a, such a fun card he hasn't been that great for me, so i don't want to overrate what he's done so we'll put him in a standard role here. We'll put you in the use more often with a stopper second there. I want, oh wait, that's max. That's the wrong max, whoops. Normal usage, da, da, da. Use more often with stopper capabilities. We're gonna override that and when you're relieving, you're going, dude. Atsuka, setup, and closer capabilities. You can come in in the seventh. You're a beast. You're a beast in that regard. All right. That that looks that looks all right. So we have we still have two lefties in the bullpen too with Pomeranz and Bummer. So we don't need. Okay, okay. We got rid of David West. We don't need to put a lefty in there because at this point now to put in another bullpen piece we have to get rid of somebody. And I don't know that Sircon has to leave with his 400 BABIP right now. I'm not worried. We're not making rash decisions based off of one aggressively bad outing. This one wasn't very good either, but these two, I mean, it's an inning of work combined with six runs. He's going to take some time to work that off. But we're not making sweeping judgments that, that he sucks now all of a sudden. Who is going to open... You know who I think could open? This gentleman right here. You could do openings and, whoops. I think Pomeranz could do op uh, openings as well. But then that would only leave us with one lefty. That might not be a great idea strategically. I'll put Sircon as an opener then. 
actually, I kind of like having his 90 stamina for later in, yeah. Hmm. It's Lorenzen or, I don't know, hang on. Let's do this. If we're gonna do it, then it needs to be like an an extra opening. Like, if, if he's gonna open, then he's he's gonna he's gonna have that. Uh, it's gonna be like three four innings as opposed to the one two innings. That's what I would want. All right, there we go. All right, we're gonna try that. That's what the pitching's looking like right now. I'm actually gonna go back and look at a few more here just to see if anybody else jumps out though. And let's get back on page four, I think it was, because we didn't really get into the higher end guys. And I just wanna see, just wanna see if anybody jumps out. Maybe we purchase a luxury item, okay? You know? We gotta see what's out there, folks. We gotta see what's out there. Ooh, Nels Potter, I like this card. Got him on another team. This is a sneak tip, nice card. Very popular in uh, silver drafts. Uh, s silver tourneys, I should say. Okay, why well, can't I do anything? Sorry, being weird. All right, moving on. Okay, oh, Josh Johnson. I think I've looked at this Josh Johnson either on this team or on one of my other, like a million times. Just like, I always look at it. And I feel like this is one of those cards that you can deal some solid seasons. Ron Darling. I like Ron Darling in the Mets booth. I think he's great with the other two, with Keith and Gary. He's perfect. I think he's starting to improve a bit. Uh, I, I didn't love him initially on the two-man booth during the playoffs on TBS. I think he's starting to get better there. With I think it's with Brian Anderson. So the movement's an issue here for Urban Shocker. What an amazing name, by the way. Urban Shocker, 1922. You guys are gonna wanna see it as well. 22. So you led baseball in hits allowed, home runs allowed, and strikeouts though. He led the National League, or American League in walk rate, and baseball in strikeout to walk rate. Interesting season. Interesting season. Is he righty or lefty? He's a righty. What a name. Urban Shocker. What a, what a name. This is something I would put in the bullpen, though. I mean, that movement is scary. Actually, I got to be honest. I didn't give it much consideration. I don't know how our home park plays. Togi Pittinger. Old Togi. Who doesn't love... The Toadster. Now, I'm all for learning new players. It's one of my favorite things about this game. I rave about it all the time. At the same time, I'm kind of leaning toward the names that I'm familiar with. If I'm being honest here right now. Matt Lindstrom. I remember chasing this fool for, st for saves so many different times. What's his career high saves? I'm going to say 22. 23 for Houston, though. He had 15 for Miami in 09. Is that when this is? No, this is 07. When he burst on the scene and pitched pretty well. Pretty well. Didn't allow any homers. This is a nice little card. I'm not going to lie. I like this. I like this. If we had a home run issue, I could see getting this. You know, Alex Fernandez, speaking of Miami, I know this is his White Sox card. This is a good little starter here, too. I kind of want this Alex Fernandez, man. I'm not going to lie. Now, is there anybody in the rotation that I would want to take out? Is it? I mean, not right now. That's the thing. It's small sample city, but I don't want to take these guys out. They're off to great starts. Let's do a little bit deeper analysis on how they did last season. We had... So Maeda's just been, like, solid. Just solid force. 107, 104, 110, and so far a 130, but 
very, 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 very early. He's been good. You know, quality. Not really a number two, but certainly not bad. Now, Freed... Freed's going to need to prove some stuff, okay? These next, uh, I would say the rest of tonight and all of tomorrow, Tuesday the 28th, it's going to be a little bit of a proving ground for him. If he doesn't stay strong here, maybe give back a little, but keep it under four, he's going to be on 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 the, uh, I don't want to say the chopping block, I'm not necessarily going to get rid of him, but he's going to be a potential replacement. Now my boy Slowey had that brilliant debut, but he's kind of grinded out two mediocre seasons since. That said, he's a perfectly capable number five. So I can leave him in the five spot. And my boy El Duque has not really come correct with too much. Maybe I'm overdoing it. Actually, you know what? Let me see. What's the global strategies? Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. I've adjusted those. Yeah, that all works. All right, well, maybe I need to bring his down a little bit if I'm going to leave him. I, wa I wonder. I do wonder if maybe he's just being pushed a little bit too much. So he's been like, okay. So f as a four or five here, that's fine. But then the top three needs to be a bit better. So I'm still looking. I'm still looking for people. I might I might buy that I might buy that Alex Fernandez. Min price we're gonna do two thousand. I think that'll start us back around where we were. There's the urban shocker. Yeah, I think I might buy this uh, this Fernandez. Oh Dick Ellsworth, I remember him from the very first season of um Perfect team. He's good. Let's see here. That's 1963. 211 and 103. That one I was not showing y'all. There you go. I'll tell you what. We're going to make some aggressive moves, folks. We're going to do it. We're going to get Ellsworth. Well, we're going to download this file first. <laughs> but we're going to spend 4400 here. We're going to get Ellsworth and Fernandez. Well, actually, we're going to put them on the list. Ellsworth and A Fern. Did I call Alex Fernandez A Fern when I was younger? Yes. Am I a total douche for doing it? Yes. Mike Cuellar. I'm a sucker for these, like, just really solid guys. Like, everything's, like, you know, no major weaknesses. It's not a bad little card either. We're in a nice little range here where these guys are, you know, solid. Chuck Stobbs. What a name. Old Stobbs. Ray Scarborough. That's Ryan Yarbrough's uncle. That's not how names work at all. At all. Vic Rashi. I remember when he was a god. Wasn't, wasn't there like a silver Vic Rashi that was just like super god status? I remember this Gary Nolan. I pulled this Gary Nolan in a pack. And he was like really good for me for several seasons. Either last year or the year before. I honestly can't remember which. All right. Oh, Jason Hamill for Colorado. What kind of card could this be? Eh, it's not terrible. I don't want it, but it's not bad. All right, well, let's look at two more pages worth. I'm not going to go all the way. I'm not I'm not trying to spend like 8K on somebody. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> ah, should we splurge, y'all? 
all right i think i'm a, so this is the tough part about filming a video about something where i would like y'all's in, input on i gotta make the moves first it's not like this is cards always just gonna be here available to buy i'm gonna get this card right now you guys let me know if we should keep it or not in the comments and if not we can sell it back maybe take a small loss but that's just them's the breaks that's what we got to do we got to we got to buy first figure it out like oh and wilbur wood oh shit y'all i'm buying this one done wilbur wood cards i feel like they've been so good and done i did it I, i'm out here let's go see how we did in our game by the way dub big dub bonds going off look at that whoa selkirk four for four you know that when it's april 18th in game time so early in the season and you go four for four to raise your average to 181 that you're off to a shit start holy crap that is so bad <laughs> that's impossible Duque, Beasting, Max coming in, finishing it up. Love to see it. All right, so here's what we got. We got moves to make now. Now some folks are losing their jobs. And I hate to do this because you were pitching well. But I'm also forward thinker, and I'm looking at the stats, and I'm seeing a 532 fit. So what I'm seeing here, fraudulent. Oh, wait, that's last year. Hang on. Hang on. 497 against the 309. Still fraudulent. Because the skills aren't that good. That's a terrible walk rate. That's a mediocre as hell strikeout rate. And that's too many homers. So Freed, love you. Was projecting a breakout for you in real life. But you gone. You gone. Now, do we want to put him in the bullpen for Pomeranz or to the bench? Tell you what, I'm going to bench him right now. That's another thing I'd like to see your thoughts on. Does he go to the bench? Oh, wait, never mind. I don't think we have space because we also have to get Andrew Miller in here. So, Freed, he gone. That's Wilbur Wood's spot. Wilbur Wood's going to jump in there. And then... Um, who are we going to put out for? I think I know who it's going to be. And it makes me sad. Sircon or... Lorenzen. Now, judging either of them off of their stats so far this year is pretty unfair, if we're being honest, because it's tiny. I wish I could look back at last year. So we'll go on the, off the ratings. They're pretty close. He's got that big stuff against righties. Now, Sircon has the big stamina, and he's supposed to be an opener. I'm a little bit too in love, I think, with the fact that Lorenzen can hit a little bit. I think I let that blind me to his overall value. I mean, he only had the one season where he actually hit worth a shit, which was 23. I mean, he wasn't bad last year, 726, for a free bench spot. It's like, it's so inconsequential, though, right? That's, that's the real issue. And he was great in 22... But since we got into, into stone and iron, he's just basically been about average. Those whip totals are freaking gross. So we're going to move Lorenzen down. We're not getting rid of Lorenzen. We're not going to get rid of Lorenzen. Freed. I might sell him, though. I might, I might go ahead and sell Lorenzen being honest there I'm gonna make him a stopper as well we're gonna have righty lefty stoppers did you 
you guys hear that? That was so bad. Specialist? Ah, uh, that's too limiting, I think. I'll go set up as his backup role. All right, we made some big moves on the pitching side, y'all. In fact, I'm going to let Wood jump ahead here. Take the next spot. Sorry, Maeda, you get bumped down a game. Whitehill. Clock's ticking for you, good sir. All right, there's the pitching. Now, I don't think Freed's going to generate some big, uh, big payoff. I think basically base price. 1174 is his cheapest. At that point, I think we're better off just hanging on right now. We don't need that G right this instant. If I find out that I need it, we'll figure it out. But I can still sell all these cards to get some extra points if I need them. I almost said stubs. And there'll be the show mindset there. All right, big additions, y'all. We did it. Now, let's attack this lineup here. Remember when we were looking at Dick Ellsworth and Alex Fernandez and then all of a sudden I just went and bought Wilbur Wood and Andrew Miller? Funny how things change that quickly. Now, what do we need to attack? Joe Judge, think your days are officially done here. You've kind of slid down. Last year was really bad. You're off to a terrible start this year. I don't want to judge too much off the 48 plate appearances. Actually, you know what? Hang on. We're at 36 minutes, about, about to be 37. Let's go ahead and make this a video. Fixing the pitching, okay? We're uh, 20 games in, we're 12 and eight. Trying to turn things around, we got a win three going. This is fixing the pitching. I'm gonna go ahead, fire right back up, do a hitting video, and post it uh, either Tuesday morning or honestly maybe late Monday night to be be quite clear is this a live series or a different kluber is there any special klubers out there by the way not that we're gonna buy any more pitching right now i'm just curious just curious in general just wondering looks like only live series okay anyway so this is gonna be the pitching again i'm sorry that it was like a whole week without a ten dollar team video um but here's the here's the latest one we've got we've got a setup we've got the pitching completely revitalized hopefully this spurs a big season for us let me know what you think about the changes if you think the miller is overkill let me know if i get enough pushback i could sell them back and we could redistribute redistribute those points but i like it i think it's the right move here uh we added scherzer and miller to the bullpen along with otsuka wood is the only addition to the rotation but it's a big addition so I'm excited. And then we'll address the offense in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit that like button. Drop a subscription if you've been watching, because why not? Then you can be notified if you hit the little bell uh, of when we go live here. And uh, I'll talk to you all later. Thanks.